Today I'd like to do a product review of a very popular little radio in the YouTube tactical community. This is the Marathon Emergency Task Force Radio, and as you can see it's quite small. It's around the same size as a deck of cards. What makes this radio popular is that it's a very small size radio that offers shortwave radio, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. So what I'm going to do for this review is give you an overview of the features, we're going to go over the size and weight of this radio, and we'll talk about the pros and cons. So let's get started. The Emergency Task Force radio is very similar to the earlier model, GP4L, but was produced initially for Canadian forces and features enhanced cold weather operation. It has a runtime of 150 hours at 40% volume. It also has a little light here at the top which has a runtime of 70 hours. On the front here you can see it has a 40 millimeter speaker. It also has a tuning indicator light and a digital clock which offers 12 hour clock format which also gives you the option of setting alarms as well. You set the clock and the alarms using the buttons on the back of the radio. On the side here is where you have your tuning and your volume controls. And then you also have uh, the option for external power, although the radio does take two AA batteries, which you could get into here. On the side, it offers all the, the normal frequency bands, so it has AM and FM. Over here it calls it the medium wave instead of AM. And then it also has the two short wave bands, which we could go into a little bit more detail later. Over here is where you have the control for the light on and off, and then you have the radio controls on and off. This it does have a flat base, so you're able to do a tail stand with this radio. Here's where you have the internal antenna. And it does have the option for an external antenna as well. So let's get started with the size and weight of this radio. Here's what the Marathon Emergency Task Force radio looks like when you compare it in size with some other popular radios. This is the Eaton Microlink FR160, the Sanjian DT400W, and this is the Sony ECF S10MK2. So the Marathon has a width of 2.55 inches, it has a length of 3.5 inches, and it has a depth of 0.9 inches. So that's 65 by 87 by 21 millimeters. The weight of it is 3 ounces without the batteries, which is 85 grams. And here's a quick little length of the antenna. The antenna is right around 10 inches then. Here's what the emergency task force radio sounds like when it's tuned into an FM station. When it locks into that signal, it gets a fairly nice sound to it. Let me turn it up. Let me change, change it to an AM radio station. That's the AM radio station. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. And now let's go to the shortwave radio. So for shortwave, uh, band 1 tunes from 5.2 to 10.45 megahertz and includes 49, 41, and 31 meter bands. This is still too loud, isn't it? Uh, for shortwave band 2, that tunes uh, from 11.1 .1 to 18.3 megahertz and includes 25, 19, and 16 meter bands. So I'm going to change it to one of those now. Now I am filming this review uh, during the daytime and most likely I'm not going to get anything. Just going to cycle through. So for if you want to use the shortwave capabilities of this radio, I would highly recommend getting an external antenna that has uh, quite a bit of length because this little antenna is really not going to pick up a whole bunch for you. Unless you're at nighttime and you have optimal conditions. To be honest, I've never got a signal in the daytime, and I rarely get it at night using just the standard antenna. We'll talk about that more in the pros and cons. Try shortwave band two. See if I have any better luck. Oh, it's got something. Oh, there we go. Something. As you can see, it has a digital display, but it has analog tuning, which is a little weird. We'll talk about that more again in the pros and cons. So let's go into a little bit more detail about shortwave radio. Shortwave radio refers to the upper medium frequency and all of the high frequency portion of the radio spectrum. So it was initially thought to be kind of useless, but now it uh, has a lot of different applications that you could use it for. 
So uh, because of how the behavior of the radio wor waves work in the Earth's atmosphere, it makes long-range communication possible. So it's used for broadcasting voice, music, and long-distance dis communication to ships and aircrafts, to remote areas, uh, out of reach of wired communication and other radio services. So some of the uses are uh, international broadcasting, domestic broadcasting, uh, different utility stations, uh, number stations, and it's very popular then with amateur radio operators. That's a brief little overview of shortwave radio. I am definitely not the expert in it, although I am researching it because I'd like to get into ham radio and some of the shortwave radio uh, little clubs that are out there. I'm doing the research on it now, so but you can find a lot of information out on YouTube regarding it. Let's move on now to the pros and cons of this radio. Just to mix things up a little bit, let's start off first with the cons. And unfortunately, I have more cons with this radio than I do pros. So let's just get right down to it. So for the digital display, uh, the, I kind of think that the analog tuning of it sucks. It's a little weird to have a digital display, but analog tuning. And it doesn't really lock in. So let me go, show you, for example. So when you're, when you're using this radio, oftentimes you'll see that it'll start shifting on you if it's not quite locked into that signal. And especially if, it, if this radio is riding around in your pocket and you're, you're not stationary. Uh, the other con I found with it, it has a very fragile uh, LCD cover. As you can see, let me turn this off really quick. I have two of them because <laughs> uh, this is the first one I purchased and within 20 minutes of owning it, I put it, let me see if you could see that with the camera, I got a little crack in it and it was just sitting in my pocket, uh, regular use, might have had my keys in there next to it and it cracked on me. So uh, one, of the, one of the pros that I'll be talking about later is the warranty that you have with Marathon. Uh, but unfortunately this LCD, this little screen is very, very fragile. It's not like with the Sanjian, I mean that's a durable screen. If you do that with this, you're going to get that little crack on there. So unfortunately, that's a, definitely a con. It's a little bit fragile, the, the entire device. So again, the, the tuning, it's highly sensitive. So you're, I'm constantly losing the signal when I'm uh, using it. And I think one of the, the problems that I have with it is that it doesn't have any indents for the controls, for the volume and the tuning controls. So as you can see here, let me scroll in a little bit. Okay, so here's the volume and the tuning control. So as you can see, there's not really a big indent in there to avoid it. So if it's sitting in your pocket, you know, these are definitely going to be accessible and be, you know, they're going to be switching around a little bit. And so when you compare that with something like the Sanjian, see the Sanjian has that little indent there to make it so the tuning, if it's looking at it flat, you don't see that knob. And so it's not going to really uh, switch up on you. But with this, it's definitely going to switch. And it's not just a thing with, I know the Sanjian's a lot more expensive radio. Uh, but also with this little cheap Sony, which is $10, it also has more of an indent for the volume control. So that's a thing if I wish that if they were to, you know, do some, another release of this radio, that they would add some little indents in there so you're not changing the controls accidentally when this radio is in your pocket. I think also that setting the alarm on this radio is kind of cumbersome just because the buttons of, of the clock and the alarm are in the back, but the display is in the front. So if you're setting it, you kind of you either have to know exactly which, which one's the hour, which one's the minute, which one's the alarm, just by memory, or you're going to have to do it over here and kind of hopefully guess that you're pressing the right thing and then look on the front. Okay, it's 1222. Let me switch it here. Okay, what is it now? It's, I kind of wish that uh, the buttons were in the front of the radio so you could actually see what you're doing while you're setting alarms and things like that. So I, put, I listed that as a, as a con. So another thing I didn't like is that the, I didn't like how the light switch uh, was used in this. So you have, as you can see here, let me scroll in a little bit again. You have on this knob here, you have the light, off, and radio. So uh, the problem I had with it is that you can't have the radio on and use the light at the same time. You either have to have the light on or you have to have the radio on. You can't have them both on the same time. So I would have preferred if they want to have a light on the radio to have the light have its own separate control, you know, light on and off. So you could use that light while you're using the radio at the same time. So I listed that as a con as well. Another problem I had with the radio is just the switch indicators. So when you're looking at the radio like this, you can see that uh, it labels everything on the back over here. These things do rub off on you, the paint that's on here. But when you're looking on the side, 
you really have no idea what that means. So which one's the volume, which one's the tuning? Unless you already, you know, <laughs> kind of have a fair understanding of what this radio is. For me, I wish that it would have, you know, when it has a volume, have a little label for volume there. So I would have preferred for the labels, just put them up here, <laughs> move that tuning one up here so I could see what I'm doing while I'm tuning it. I just don't understand the design of that. You also have the same thing when you're talking on the side over here for FM, for AM, shortwave, and then the light. When you look at it like this, what does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> Again with the Sanjian, you know, you have they have the indicators, the painting there, so you could actually see what you're pressing. Okay, that's what that button is, that's what that knob is. With the, with the Marathon, you have absolutely no idea what those are unless you look over here. And if this stuff rubs off, good luck. <laughs> so I listed that as a, I put label suck on my notes. So I don't, I don't understand why it's away from the switches. Uh, another con I listed was for shortwave, you know, the external antenna is definitely, it's pretty much mandatory to have it. So while this does, you know, as you heard in this uh, review, we were able to get a little bit of a signal. You basically have to have an external antenna with this thing. Another thing that I uh, listed as a con, I'm sorry that there's so many on this one, uh, is I didn't like the battery cover at all. So it has a little, let's see, so when you open it up, you know, if you lose this cover, this cover comes all the way off. If you lose this, you're basically done because the way that these <laughs> batteries that you, as you saw, it kind of jumps right out of there. So if you lose the battery, co the cover of the battery, even if it comes off a little bit, you're going to lose your clock just like that, like I did there. And you kind of have to push it in. It's kind of almost spring loaded and <laughs> problems like that occur as well. What I would have preferred is for the batteries to be more like some of the other radios. We'll take out the Sony, for example, where it has, the batteries are like this. They're not going to pop out on you as soon as you open it. And even if you did lose this thing, you're still still able to use the radio. The batteries aren't going to move out of there unless you're really shifting it around. With the Sanjian, it's also very similar. With this one, it's nice. You're not going to lose this. It's connected to it. And even if it does open on you, the batteries aren't going to come out. With the Marathon, once that thing's open, you lost your clock, you, you might lose your batteries, you'll lose your cover, and if you lose your cover, you're done. So I listed that as a con of this radio. I'm not really happy with it. I wish it was more similar to what you see with some of the other radios designs for the battery cover. And uh, last but not least, I thought it was a, a, you know, it does offer shortwave. I thought it was kind of pricey. This thing costs around, I don't know, between $30 and $35, uh, which is uh, very pricey for what you get, especially considering that the shortwave isn't the best shortwave in the world. For example, this little Sony cost $10. And there's some other radios that are available. I've done some reviews of them, uh, which offer, you know, functionality that's at a cheaper rate. Although this does offer shortwave, so that I know that's a bonus for it. And that's what I have for the cons. Let's go over the pros of this radio. So I don't have as many as I do for the cons. Uh, number one, I really like the size of it. It's extremely small, so you could really include it in any kind of any of your bug out bags uh, for your EDCs. Uh, it's just a small little radio, so a very nice size with it. It gets the radio in the front gets a very nice sound, especially on the FM radio stations when you're tuned in. I do like the the option of having external power just in case you don't you don't want to go through batteries all the time. Although it is an an option that you have to buy, it would be kind of nice if it was included with the radio. But I understand that they're probably trying to keep the cost down a little bit too. I like the ability to be able to do a tail stand. It's always a prerequisite of mine. And uh, even though it's small, it still uses AA batteries, which are my favorite batteries to use. So it's uh, the most common one, and I like to try to kind of keep a consistent battery type. So I was happy that it used uh, AA batteries and not AAA batteries. And then last but not least, it does have a very great warranty. For example, when I broke this radio over here, I contacted Marathon, and they very quickly they responded back to me, and they uh, said, you know, sorry, and they shipped me off this new radio over here, and I had it in within a matter of days. So they didn't even ask uh, anything specific on what I did or photos or anything. It was just no question. They sent it to me, and uh, it has a very nice warranty. So the warranty with the Marathon is very good if you do happen to break it. If you're like me, you might break that LCD. So you're you might have to use that warranty on the Marathon. And that's all I have for the pros of this radio. That's going to do it for this product review of the Marathon Emergency Task Force Radio.
In summary, this is a very popular radio in the tactical community, especially for those that want to have shortwave capabilities in a small form factor. But for me, I thought it had too many cons uh, in my personal preference. I would uh, prefer to go with a radio that was a little bit more stable, uh, according to my testing. So I think, in my opinion, if you want to have a radio with shortwave capabilities, I would recommend going with a higher quality radio, something maybe a little bit more expensive that offers full digital tuning, so not with analog tuning like this. I think you might get a little bit better results. But I know that this radio is popular on YouTube, so some of you might disagree with this product review. So please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this product review of the Marathon Emergency Task Force Radio. Take care.